Hi, in this video, I'll explain the step, create new users and allow a user to delete accounts. This is the second step in the project, protect your data in Salesforce. In this video, I will show you how to configure your Trailhead Playground as we go through this project together. And I'll also explain some of the difficult business concepts that come up so it makes sense to you, you'll understand why you're doing this technical stuff and what the business outcome is that you're trying to achieve. By the end of this video, you'll be able to complete this step and ultimately earn this badge with confidence. Okay, let's get to it. If this starts off by talking about, you know, you're reviewing the data access for the CEO and the executive team. The CEO wants to ensure users have access to the objects they need to do their job, but wants to restrict the ability to delete records to just executive users and the support team. Noah Larkin, the VP of services, is helping to clean up the records and needs temporary permission to delete accounts. Typically, you don't want to delete accounts within a company. Your accounts from a business point of view, those are the people that you can sell stuff to. So you, you don't want to like remove them from your database unless the information is just totally wrong. And so that's a profile that we typically just wouldn't want people to have access to because we don't want somebody to say, oh, I, I'm not working on that account anymore. Let me go ahead and delete it. You know, well, you might not be working on it anymore, but somebody else two years from now might like, no, don't delete that. We need that information. So this is why we're creating this unique profile because this is part of a specific project to clean up data. So here, let's go ahead and create this new profile without delete permissions. From setup, enter profiles. Oh, I've already done this. There we are. Click S from the alphabet picker. Okay, obviously there's multiple ways of doing this, but we'll, we'll follow the instructions here. Click clone next to the standard platform user. I want to explain this a little bit. The best way to create a new profile is to clone the profile. That's super important because down the road here, hopefully you're going to be doing the security specialist super badge. And I just want to make sure that like you actually understand, like this is the way to create profiles is to clone the one that's most similar to what you actually need to have. Since the standard platform user is the most similar one, we're only gonna be changing one thing here. This is the profile that we want to change. And so we're gonna clone it. We're gonna give it a new name, standard profile, no account delete. Very nice and specific, tells us exactly what to expect. Click save and then edit. I already click save. Here's where we go for edit. We're gonna go down here and we're gonna remove permission to delete the accounts. And then click save. Okay, now we've created this new profile. We haven't assigned it to anybody yet, but this profile exists. So we can now create users and assign this profile to them. Set login access policies and create a new user. From setup, enter login access policies in the quick find box and select login access policies. Select the enable checkbox next to administrator can log in as any user. And then we're gonna click save. Now from setup, enter users and then select users. And we're gonna click new user. I'm gonna talk through some of the unique features about this user, but then the rest of them, I'm just gonna you know, show very quickly um, how to do it. You don't need to watch me create users after I've created one, right? So we'll skip ahead there. First name, Maya. So we're gonna click new user. The alias gets filled in automatically. The email address is your own email address. Okay, the username, usernames need to be unique within Salesforce, okay? And so here they give you, a, you know, a way of coming up with a unique username. You could do whatever you want though. Like I'm gonna do mlarat at rewild because I'm a bit of a nature freak. And then um, the nickname goes in here. And then the title, accounts receivable. Okay, so. Accounts receivable, those are the people inside of the business that once a, you know, a business has rendered services to a customer, the customer then needs to pay the business. The department that makes sure that they collect the money, that's 
accounts receivable. Okay, so that's that's what her her title is here. The department that she's part of is sales. Sales has a bunch of different roles in it. It has the people who do the cold calling and developing the original leads. Those are usually called business development reps, BDRs. Then it has people who manages the opportunities. Those are usually called the account executives, AEs. If there's something that technical needs to be done or some sort of additional configuration to help get the deal across, that's sometimes called a sales engineer or a solution engineer. And then once the customer has purchased and said, yeah, I want to buy this, then it usually goes to a different team. And that's the team that makes sure the customer is happy with what they've purchased and that they've are, you know, and if, if the customer needs anything else in addition, that team's there to sell it to them. And that's usually the sometimes called the customer success group. So you, you have these like different roles, but they're all part of the sales department. Okay, and sometimes they're broken up into different departments, depends on the company, depends on the product. That's generally how it works. User license that she's going to have is the Salesforce platform and the profile is this new one that we just created. That's the standard profile, but not able to delete accounts. And then the role is going to be the Western sales team. And I want to explain this a little bit. When we talk about role hierarchy, if you've never worked inside of a large company, it's sort of a confusing concept. But where you sit in the company, meaning who your manager is and who their manager is and where they roll up into the people that report directly to the chief executive, to the CEO, that very much determines like what your job function is. So if you're in the sales, if you're, a, if you're underneath the sales leader, you're in the sales department. If you're underneath the marketing leader, you're in the marketing department and so on. If you are part of the Western sales team, and again, security access, we only want people to see the minimum amount of information they need to do their job. If you are part of the Western sales team, you only need to see the accounts that are based in the West. So this role is a way of being able to restrict access to accounts that are based in the West. Your profile is then like what you're able to do within that role. Now, there's a bunch of different roles, like you could see through them, you know, whether you're in marketing or North American sales, you're gonna have access to all of North America accounts, right? Do you see how this sort of works? Like, so depending on where you're at in your role hierarchy, we could then configure the app to give you just the information that you need. If you're Support International, you're going to need to have access to all of the cases for all of the accounts on the entire globe. Okay, we're gonna then put in the locale settings and that's all set. And then we're gonna click Save and New. And then we're gonna do this for Ted. Okay, so we've created those first two users. Now we wanna create more users. The problem is, is that you only have a certain number of available licenses in a Trailhead Playground, because it's just sort of a sandbox. We don't want people actually using it to run their business, so we wanna keep that restricted. When a company purchases from Salesforce licenses, those licenses then get assigned to users and that user is then an active user. You can have a user that's not an active user. You might have created the user at one point and then they decided to leave the company, but you don't want to delete all of their information or maybe things that are dependent on them. So you could just deactivate the license and then assign that license to a new user. So that way, as a business, you're not having to pay Salesforce for more licenses than you're actually using. So keeping in mind this difference between a user and a user license and a license being assigned to a user is an active user. A user without a license is an inactive user is super important, particularly when you get to the security specialist super badge where you have to create all sorts of users and you only have a certain number of licenses. So doing this process now will help you later on down the road here. Navigate to users and setup and click edit next to Maya's name. And then we're gonna click here. And now we get a pop-up telling us, you know, you're gonna make her inactive. Inactive, yeah, that's true. And we'll click save. 
And now Maya is now no longer active. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing for Ted. And now we could go on and create our additional users. So now that we've created our users, we're now going to allow a user to delete accounts using permission sets. From setup, enter permission sets. And we're going to create a new one called delete accounts. And the API name is going to be delete accounts when that gets filled in automatically and the description grants delete accounts permission. And the license is Salesforce platform. And then we're going to click save. Okay, so, so far, all we've done now is just created a permission set. We haven't given it any logic yet. So now we're going to go tell this permission set what it actually is. So we're going to go into object settings and it's on the accounts object. And we're going to click edit and select delete under object permissions. So edit, and we're going to give it permission to read, edit and delete. But if I just click delete, then edit and read automatically get filled in. And that's not magic, that's just logic, right? If you have the ability to delete something, of course, you should also have access to editing it and you need to be able to see it in order to be able to delete it. So you need access to reading as well. So that's why just clicking that one button, the other three automatically filled in. Okay, and then we're gonna click save and then uh, manage assignments. and then click Add Assignments, and then we're going to select NOAA. And then done. Now we could log in as NOAA and see that it works. So we're going to go to Users. I'm going to follow the instructions here. You could actually just click Log In right there, but I'm going to do this. Users. And then next to Noah, we're going to click login. Get all these nice little pop ups about these cool features. From the app launcher, click accounts, and then we're going to see all accounts. So we'll do. And we're going to look at Genie Point. And then we should be able to see delete permission, the delete permission. So you see here, we are now able, he, Noah would be able to delete GeniePoint account. Let's verify the step.